Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Altenew. Normally there's a little more lead in time before I start talking, however, I'm missing some footage. So in this release, Altenew is releasing some new watercolor tube paints. This is the previous ones that they've released. The new ones are an SV orange, a gold ochre, a yellow lemon, olive green, French ultramarine, Payne's gray, and ivory black. So those are the ones that you see swatched, which I did do on camera. The camera just ate it. <laughs> so um, you can see they're kind of leaning a little bit more towards some of those desaturated colors, which are great, kind of round out what they already have. Here, I'm just showing you a couple of options for watercolor paper. This is the one that the Altenew sell, um, site sells, and then these two are the Artistry by Altenew, which is just a higher grade. The one um, that they sell at the Altenew store, I think, is 50% cotton. The other two are 100% cotton. I am using the cold press because that is my preferred um medium it is a little bit more textured but hot press i just have a little bit of a harder time getting my pigment to move that's not the case for everybody but it is for me so we're going to be doing some no line watercoloring this is the prim peonies from altenew and i am inking this up in their fresh dye ink which what color is this sand dunes um so I just have this in my um, stamp wheel, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp this down. Um, I like to stamp mine twice. That is what I did here. That is why it is the color it is, but you're not even going to see any of this outline by the time that we're done. Normally, when I am filming watercolor, I will film the entire thing and then just speed it up so you can see the whole painting. Because of the issues I was having at my, with my camera at this time, uh, and I kept having to stop it, that is not the case with this one. I will show you a couple of petals, and um, then I will finish painting it off screen, and then the same thing for each consecutive peony. So this type of watercolor painting is a much more controlled version. Um, and so what I'm doing here is I'm putting down a more concentrated version of the gold ochre, and then I'm going back in with clean water and I am blending it out. Uh, this for me is what helps me to be able to keep all of the petals and all of the detail that I really love. Um, I know a lot of times people feel like they can't control their watercolor. And if you have that feeling, then you're probably using too much water. So for a long time, I'm pretty decent about it now with practice, like knowing how much water to pick up. But if you find yourself picking up too much water consistently, just keep a uh, paper towel or, you know, what have you, baby wipe or something on hand. And before you take your paintbrush to the paper, blot the base of the bristles. It'll absorb all of the extra water, but leave the dampness in your tip for you to be able to move your pigment. So... I still don't have the pans. I did finally order them, but it was after this video. Um... So basically just picking up more concentrated color, you still want it to be wet enough that it's smooth and then applying that down where I want my area to be the darkest. And as long as you're not working on two petals next to each other, uh, with watercolor, you never want to work on two things next to each other because they'll just become one blob. You want to make sure you're sectioning off and not working next to anything, um, so that way you can keep your edges nice and detailed. But you can do, once you get comfortable, you can do one or two petals at a time. Um, I typically don't do more than three. And um, that's, I mean, that's as many as I'm comfortable with. And then if you still want it to be darker still, while it is wet, you can go back in and drop in some more color, but you can also build layers. And so this, for this flower, I started with my darkest color, um, which was the gold ochre. And then I went over and kind of glazed in and added a bit of the, um, what is it? Hold on, I'll come up with it. The yellow lemon to brighten it up for my leaves. And I am going to show you the leaves again because I know we didn't get the whole thing. 
I, for my darker color, I mixed the moss with a little bit of the Quin, uh, I'm just going to call it Quin magenta because you all know I can't say that word. Because they're complementary colors, you can kind of desaturate one color with the other. Um, and that is also how I did the stamen in the center of the flower. But again, I will show you that um, because I realized that it didn't catch it. To bring a little bit of brightness to the leaves, I did pick up some of the, um, which is a, the, from the previous release, some of that phthalo green and mix it with my olive. And um, this is just going to add a little bit of brightness. You could do the same thing by mixing it with a little bit of yellow. Um, that would also help to make it brighter. But again, this one is like three separate leaves, so I can work on them all at the same time. Um, the one up top, which I'm just going to show you one of the leaves, um, because they are one on top of the other, I have to do one leaf, let it dry, and then go back and do the other leaf. Now, you might be thinking like dry time. Kelly, this is a lot. With this particular technique, because we are using such little water, your dry time really should be minimal. By the time you're coming back around to paint anything that's next to um, the things that you've painted, they should be pretty much dry. So if you have any water that is bubbled up, if you have anything that's taking a long time to dry, you're probably using too much water for this particular technique. Now, if you're going for a looser style, of course, you would want to have more water. More water does mean less control. It all depends on the style of watercolor artist that you are. For my middle peony, I am going to use this SB orange, and this time I'm going in with my lighter color first. So I'm going in and I'm putting down my, um, this is just the pure pigment, the, and it is more concentrated, as you can see. And then I'm just going to put that where I want it to be the darkest, and then I will rinse my paintbrush, blot it if I need to, um, and then come back in and move that pigment out. Here, like I said, I'm doing three. That's about as, as many as I'm comfortable doing as, at one time. Um, but everybody is different, so whatever works for you. Here comes that clean water. And I'm just going to go in and start moving this pigment around. It will, of course, remain darker where we've put the darkest pigments, um, but it not so much that it's not blending. If you find that it's not blending, you might have to just work the water a little bit more, work your paintbrush to kind of get that to spread. Um, and I did find that to be true with this particular orange color. Now, I know I'm calling it an orange, but it is... Um, it's definitely more on like the corally side, especially when you water it out. It's definitely more, um, it's like a good in between, between the, um, for the original colors, the tuoladine red and the permanent yellow, like that orange fits in pretty perfectly in between the two of them. If your color is moving or you've added color and it's, it's more like it's not blending the way that you want it to, um, you can either add more water and let the water do the work, um, or you can go back in and try to reblend it. Try, try, try. I know it is so hard. Try to leave it and let it dry um, because oftentimes it will be very pretty and it will end up looking beautiful <laughs> if you just leave it alone. If you overwork it, you end up with color that is very one note that's much more of a wash than most people want when they are doing their watercoloring. So like I said with this one I started with the um with the orange with the with the true pigment um and then I will go back in and add my darker colors over top of that. So it's just going to be how you like to layer colors, um, but you can do them either or. Obviously, you know, it's going to be more challenging with the, the deeper, darker colors to do them first and then put brightness over top of them. Um, but if it's like a mid-tone, you can do one and then the other. So yeah, this was, I really actually enjoyed this. I haven't watercolored in a really long time. Um just because it does take me a while. So I didn't, 
<laughs> I wasn't really doing it for a long while. Um, so this kind of like, I don't know, kind of reinvigorated my my love for watercolor. So now let's talk about mixing those colors again. This time around, I um, wanted to make a deeper orange. So the first one I tried, and play around with your colors, guys. The first one I tried was mixing the magenta with the orange, and it did give me a darker color. However, it was more on the red side, and I didn't want that. I wanted more of a rust color. So I'm going to pick up some of that, um, what is that? It's uh, Prussian blue and not very much. Okay. You don't, you don't want there to be a ton because you're shading the orange. You're not, um, you know, creating a blue color, but now I can go back in. This is all dry. Everything's dry. I can go back in and go right over top of those areas that I want to be darker and, um, I can add more shading and then I'm just going to do the same thing that I did previously, which is, and I just, I did the same three petals again so you could see. Now, obviously, um, we had some camera issues yet again, but basically you're just going to lay it down, your darker color over top, and then blend that out as well. Um, so... It's just the same process. It's just layering the colors twice. Um, so here for this one, you can see I'm adding a little bit of the magenta into the green. So I'm doing this one the way that I did the first peony because I know that you missed it. So I'm starting with a darker color. I mixed the magenta into a little bit of moss green. This is my darker color. And then um, I'm going to, again, put that down where I want it to be the darkest. And then I am going to water it out. Um, well, it was meant to be clean water, but apparently I didn't, I didn't <laughs> clean my brush that well. Um, but then I will, you know, just work that pigment um, out until it starts to just kind of bloom out into that petal. So if you, I have done another video on these um, watercolor uh, tube paints. Uh, when they first came out, I did a review showing the other colors that they have. And for that one, I didn't use a stamp. I just did my own drawing because it was more of a review based. By the time I was doing these ones, I knew that I liked the the watercolor paints. Um, so I didn't feel the need to do a review because this is now a product that I would use um, in my crafting. So um, just to kind of recap a little bit of price point, they do have bundles that you can purchase. Um, you, of course, can buy the primaries um, and then mix any colors that you need. Uh, but if you wanted to buy them individually, they are about, uh, it depends, eight, nine bucks a tube. Some t well, some of them are 10, eight, between eight and $10. Um, and they are, hold on, let me look at the size. I want to say they're, f they're eight milliliter. Um, so they, um, there is quite a bit of, of paint in there. Um, but just in case you did not know what that information was. Um, so here I am doing the same thing that we've been doing, um, but I am on the petals that are folded up. I am not really adding any of the darker color. I'm just using the true quidecridone magenta um, in just a very light watered down version. So here you can see that I am working on two petals that are next to each other. Um, the first one was dry. I did go out of my lines just a little bit into the other uh, petal, which I did not love. Um, so that's what you see me doing here. Yes, I knew that my colors were going to blend together, uh, but I didn't want there to be that spot where the darkness kind of came in. So I fixed it that way, and then I just figured why well, I would go back in with darker color um, once everything was dry. 
So just going in, and again, you can see I'm keeping those petals um, separate. I'm not, you know, working on anything next to each other so that everything stays really nice and detailed. Um, this style of watercoloring, again, like I said, is not for everybody. I do like a looser style of watercoloring sometimes, um, but this one seems to be kind of like my go-to where it's a little bit tighter, a little bit more detailed, and that... Um, that seems to make me happy. So originally I had posted this on Instagram just the way that it is. Um, you know, just the watercoloring on white um, because the artistry by Altenew isn't necessarily about card making. You know, it's more about the um, the artist, the, the artistic tools. Um, and so I felt comfortable posting that. But because I loved it so much, like, I loved the final painting so much, I had to turn it into a card. <laughs> and so that's why we have this video, because I am going to show you the painting, but then I'm also going to show you how I chose to turn it into a card. And um, I love the way that that turned out, too. I think it's super, super cute. So I'm, I'm inspired to try to incorporate more watercoloring into my card making, even though it is it is kind of time consuming for me. Um so, um, yeah, and you, I should mention also that all of this, like normally for my videos, I speed it up because, um, I'm trying to fit the whole thing into a certain amount of time, but because I only had snapshots of my progress, uh, this is actually real time. This is how long it takes me to paint something. Um, so it's not sped up at all. It is, you know, the real-time progression of how long it takes me to move through things. Um, so you can kind of see, like, my stutter steps, you know, am I need more water? Do I need more paint? Do I, you know, what am I, what's happening? <laughs> um, so, yeah, but I do, I do like these, especially now that they're getting more uh, desaturated colors, which is typically what I tend to reach for, um when I am doing watercolor. So here is where I'm going to go in. I'm going to start adding in that um, original color. So it's going to get a little bit brighter, um, not quite as desaturated as the, the previous color. Um, and that's just because I, while I do want them to look realistic, I also do enjoy a little bit of a brighter color. So this is how I've kind of found my my happy medium in between the two. Um, and you can see how much just like that flower kind of just comes up with the, or that petal kind of comes up with the brightness. Um, and after everything is dry, of course, you know, that's when if you need some more depth, some more dimension, you can absolutely go back in there. Um, you could see that back petal that's really curled up and over. Um, I just went in and just added more darkness. I didn't even really blend it out with any water. Um, I just went in there and painted kind of some more dark areas because if you don't have the darkness, then you're not going to have the dimension that you're looking for that's going to make the bud look um, as if it's kind of opening up. And here again, that's what I'm doing. I'm going in, I'm putting in some darker color under where it's curled up and over. Um, your lightest areas should be like kind of the outside tops of the petals. Anything inside is going to be relatively dark because it has all of the petals that are up over top of it. One of the things that I do like to do for the outside petals where I know I want it to be light, if I have, um, you know, put down a lot of dark pigment in one area, I like to just kind of swipe my damp brush through there to just pick up a minimal amount of color. And then I take what's on there, which is the brighter color, the, the true, um, you know, hue of the, the color. And then I will swipe that over my lighter areas so I don't have to pick up a ton of pigment um, in order to get that little bit of brightness in there. You also can, if you get too much pigment down, which I didn't really have that problem here, but if you get too much pigment down, um, you can rinse your brush, blot it while it's still, um, 
you know, damp, you can go in and use it as kind of an eraser to pick up pigment. It will suck it up. Um, so if you have any issues, you can also use a paper towel. Watercolor is very, very forgiving. Um, so if you have an area that you're trying to lighten, it's just gotten too dark on you, um, you know, hit it with some water, blot it with a paper towel, and then you can just keep going. Um, usually, if you have, you're using quality paper, as many times as you need. So here, what I'm doing is I'm mixing my pink and my green a little bit of pink, a lot of green, and I'm creating a brown. Any two complementary colors are going to create a brown, but which complementary colors you use depend on what color brown you make. Um, so here, this one is more of like a cooler brown because I'm using the olive and the magenta, and I'm using this brown to color in the stamen of my peonies. They don't have a a, a brown brown. Um, here what I'm doing is now that the color is down and it's still wet, I've rinsed off my brush, I've pulled off all the excess water, and then I'm just going in with a slightly damp brush and pulling that color down to act as the, um, like the stems of my stamen. So, um, yeah, there's just, it, it's, there's really something about no line watercoloring that makes you feel like you're a real artist <laughs> um, because it just turns out so realistic and I just love that. Um, so here what I'm doing is I thought I showed you the leaves. I'm sorry that I didn't. Um, I apologize for that. I thought that we had more shots of that, but apparently we don't. Um so now, in order to really make those details stand out, I'm going back to the darkest colors. So for this yellow peony, it's that gold ochre. I'm going back in, and again, a highly concentrated amount. And I am using, what am I using? A number two, I think. Um, this is the, these are the watercolor brushes from Artistry by Altenew, and I am using a number two. Uh, they come in a pack of five, which I really like. Um, I like the that they have five different options. But anyway, I'm going in and I'm looking for the lines that were already there and I'm just enhancing them. In some areas, I'm being honest, in some areas I did add my own detail work, my own lines where it felt like it needed a little something to help shape it. Um, but you don't have to do that. You can just follow the lines that are there from the illustrator and still get a really nice result. And this is also, again, if you feel like you have, you're have you missing maybe some depth and dimension, this is a great time to go back in. That's what I'm doing here. And really define those darker areas to make sure you're getting the level of dimension that you want. Uh, these lines here are some that I added that were not there. They just felt like they needed a little help. <laughs> um, but really, using that sand dune color, by the time that we're done, you really can't even tell um, that we used any of that. I'm mixing up some more of that phthalo blue with my SV orange for the detail on this peony. And again, these are very small lines. You don't need a ton of um, paint on your brush. You need very minimal water. You need enough to make it smooth. You don't want it to be scratchy. Uh, I, not for this this technique. There's other, I, or maybe that's your style, which is totally fine. But I didn't want it to be scratchy. I wanted it to be smooth. Um, and so I'm just going in and looking for those lines anywhere where I want to add those detail lines myself um, so that you can really tell the shape of the petal and which way that it is turning um, or anywhere that it's already been put in, like I said. Um, and then last but not least, we'll go back to that that olive and magenta for the detail work in this peony. For the leaves, it will be the same thing. It will be the same mixture, but it will be more olive, less magenta um, in order to get that kind of desaturated olive color to do the details on the leaves. There wasn't really a ton to do in the pink 
flower um, just because it's kind of really tight. Uh, you know, it's a smaller bud. So here is the me mixing for the leaves. And again, these, I just kind of defined the stem and then there was a line that was kind of going up each one of the leaves. Um, and so I just put that back in to make sure that they didn't look blobby and that they did look, you know, like they had some detail in them, which is how they looked when I originally stamped them. So once we got all of the painting out of the way, which obviously is the vast majority of this video because it does take so long, um, I knew that I wanted to um, do something. I, you guys know, if you watch my channel, you know, I love um, a contrast, a dramatic contrast. And so this, everything is dry. I'm going to go in and use the coordinating die to cut this out. These peonies together are beautiful, but they're very large. Like this spray of, of flowers is very large. Um, and so I die cut them out with the intention of actually cutting them in half and using one up top and one below. So I pulled out, this is Indigo cardstock from Spellbinders, which is my new love. Uh, it's like a, such a rich, uh, rich, deep navy. Totally love it. Um, and then I decided to do a white frame, which is really going to pop off that navy. So I have two dies. These are, um, they, these are from Spellbinders, uh, stacking dies. And I cut out multiple frames. So here I'm trying to figure out how I want to cut these um, to make sure that I'm going to have enough for the top and the bottom. And I did do this with my paper trimmer, though you could use scissors. Um, and then I'm going to have this yellow with a little bit of orange that hangs down from the top. And then I will have um, the little bit of orange and some pink that comes up from the bottom. Gives us a really nice balanced design. The softness of the flowers is contrasting with the sharpness of that white frame. Um, and that is making me so happy. So once I had the flowers where I wanted them, I left them in place while I put my sentiment down. The sentiment is actually from the Paint of Flowers Calla Lily, which I also want. Now they come to think of it, I also watercolored, but I used Alta News, um watercolor brush markers when I did those. Uh, and those were super fun. But I am going to heat emboss this uh, in white since we are using the white frame and I have a white outline around my florals. Um, so I am inking this up after I treated with my anti-static tool in the cloud white pigment ink from Altenew. I like to stamp mine twice and just be very gentle so that I don't smush, especially something that's this fine. This font is really fine. Um, and so I don't push very hard. You just want to like kiss it to the paper and it's better to stamp multiple times than to stamp once and smush it because uh, you won't be happy with your results. So now I am using Altenew's white, um, I think it's called pure white, uh, embossing powder. And then I'm just going to heat set this until it is smooth. I did have one or two little strays. Um, I just got that with my pokey tool, little trick I learned from Laura Basson, who is amazing. Um, and so just going to heat set this until it's smooth. And now we can start building everything together. So I am going to stack, like I said, I cut three of these. I'm going to stack them all on top so that they will, um, just give our, there's, outside of the painting, which obviously we want to be the focal point, right? We spent all that time on it. Uh, but there's not really a whole lot else going on on the card. So sometimes in order to make it a little bit more interesting, um, you can use different layers of dimension to make things just a little bit more pleasing. Um, so I am, like I said, I'm going to stack all three of these and then I'm going to go ahead and put this onto the card. This is centered onto the card. Um, so same distance, you know, all around or as close as I could get it because I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm definitely not perfect. Um, 
so then that way you can see we have this wonderful contrast totally love the white and the navy and then I will adhere my um, florals using some foam tape so the foam tape will be a little bit taller than the frame itself um, and but I do have to a lot for the frame you know what I'm saying? So what I'm going to put it down. I'm going to see, okay, how far do I have need to take the tape over? But I can't let it overlap the frame itself because then it would be too, too high. <laughs> so I just went through and I had to do this for both of my uh, cut painted pieces and just leave that little bit of a gap. So there is some foam tape on the edge, some foam tape towards the center, um, but wherever it is, you'll see those two little gapped areas. Once I have that, which I did use the, I think it's Instant Dimension Foam Tape from Alta New for that, um, I'm going to go ahead and put these down. And then the pink and orange one was flush, but the yellow and orange one was not. I did have a little bit that was hanging off up top there. So I will need to trim that off just to make sure um, that it's flush with, you know, my A2 size card and it fits nicely into an envelope. Um these are this this foam tape is lately has kind of been my go-to because they do sell it in the big roll and I do love a big roll of foam tape. It just makes my life easier. Oh, I did have leaves that stuck out. I had to trim on that side. I forgot about those. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm trimming I'm trimming both sides. Uh, and when any like when I'm using the foam tape, I typically do use my Spellbinders detail scissors because they are non-stick. So cutting through the foam tape is so much easier because my scissors aren't sticking to it. So just to finish it off, I added some gems. These are, I believe, Moon, Moonstone, I think is what they are, from uh, Trinity Stamps. And I just put those down with my glue press and then that's it. That is the whole, um, that's the whole card. So I hope it inspired you to give this a try, some no-line watercoloring, check out the new colors. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.